My best friend would be 23. She left her body and hovered above me. I saw no shadow. I looked around. Searched every building and home that I found. I saw no shadow, but felt a glow. The warmth inside me kept me afloat. It felt like heaven. I found my bones. It gave me comfort when I feel alone. Now you're gone. I'm alone. I guess it's time to get better. Through the pain, I will go alone. If I fall. Best friend would be 23. She left her body and hovered above me. Best friend would be 23. I heard the heavens crying above me. The gains an angel. I lost a friend. I felt like dying again and again. I went to hell instead of death. But I keep fighting with each living breath. I saw no way out from where I stood. Felt like the fire had burned me for now. You're gone. I'm alone. I guess it's Turns you get better through the pain. I will go alone if I fall. your self-righteous symphony I would rather let this go than to bring it up again 
What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the Daily Fishing Podcast. We are live once again. It's Thursday. It's our day. It's a ton of fun. We're excited to talk to you guys. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to have a really, really fun show. We've got an awesome guy here. we got Don Morse from Autism Anglers. He's doing some really cool stuff. And we're going to show our support this episode, you guys. Every dollar that comes in from Super Chat is going to be donated to Autism Anglers. And we're super stoked for this. It means a lot to us. So, Don, how are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm doing pretty good. I wouldn't, I don't know about the super awesome part, but hey, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> I mean, we got some stuff to talk about. First of all, when you popped in and Paul saw your background, he started, started drooling. <laughs> Shaz, what happened? Mm-hmm. All right, everybody. Us? <laughs> All right. So uh, if you're in the chat right now, how's the volume? I saw volume twice. Wait, is volume loud or not loud enough? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little. Oh, it's a little you. low. You want me to shout? This, and this is it. And it begins. Here we go. <laughs> Week number two, <laughs> Skype. <laughs> Freaking updates, man. How about now? Volume now, How do we sound now? Are we good? Everyone with the volume maxed out is like, yeah, holy crap. Yeah. How about now? We're good? <laughs> much, much, better, better. much better, much better, much better, much better. Better, See? better, better. Now okay. we just say thanks, Charles. Ready? Let's try this again. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Burly Fishing Podcast. <laughs> we are live once again. It's Thursday. It's our night. We're stoked to see you guys. We're going to have a great show. I'm content in saying that the second time, second time's a charm, we're going to have a great show, okay? So we got Don Morse here. If you guys didn't hear me say that, he is here from Autism Anglers, and they're doing some awesome things. We're going to talk a lot about it during the episode. This means a lot to me personally. We'll get into that in the episode as well. And, you know, Don... How are how you doing? I'm asking you a second time because they didn't hear how you were doing the first time. So how you doing, man? You know, I'll take your super awesome this time. You know, uh, no, it's great, man. It's uh, doing great. Um, been a, a long day. All my days are long. Uh, so much going on, not only with the autism anglers being my my third, fourth full-time job, uh, but it's the one that's passionate to me. So, um, and yeah. you know what? This is perfect. Uh, autism Awareness Month started the day. Uh, April every year. Tomorrow is National Autism Awareness Day. Uh, so what perfect timing. I love it. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely, man. I mean, I knew it was the, the best way to kick off April for sure. Oh, and we got our first super chat here too. So Angel Savadra, Savedra, I think I said it right. Uh, Let's raise some money for children with autism. Thank you so much, my friend. In case you guys didn't hear me because the volume was messed up, every single dollar that comes in via Super Chat tonight, we are going to donate to Autism Anglers. I will take care of that after the fact. I'll announce when we take care of it, but it's happening. We already worked this out with Don. We're stoked about it. So if you guys want to donate, again, this one, this one, this episode, not for us. It's for these kids. And it's a lot of fun. And we're going to talk more about this program and what Don actually does for these kids with this program later on the show. So we're going to get to it real quick. we got some updates, right? So, hey, if you guys like the show, be sure to subscribe, smash the like. You can smash the like right now. You can also share this live stream with any of your fishing friends or, you know, heck, with anybody who wants to do some good because we're donating today. So you just got to share this episode, share it up, people. Let's do this. Uh, other than that, quick shout out to our members who make this show possible. You guys are fan freaking tastic. We're up to like 13 now. I can't even believe it. So big shout outs here to Jerry Jones, Andy Ramey, Army Outdoors 88 North. I'm saying North. It's a big capital N. So I'm assuming North. You got to tell me what that means later, man. IG me. Uh, Hookshank Hewitt. Jeff Kane, Chris Shu, Brazino Fishing, Paul's Improved Clinch Knot, formerly known as, oh, I can't see your full name on here because it's not Max. <laughs> is, it, is it Sports Freak? I think it was. Yeah. I, that, that name is just so good. Mark Terrio, Stormy, uh, Storm Wells, Gregory Whitaker, Jeff Lauer, Pima 623, and Bruce Wild, and we'll just say it, F7 Sandman. Why you joined, Chaz, I don't <laughs> know, but we appreciate you so much. Thanks, bro. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Yo, Mark Terrio with $25 Super Chat. Woo, there we go. There it, it is. It says, let's go, Trucers. We, is there a nickname for the nickname? So it's sponsored by Monster Bass. We have a $25 gift card for you guys. So as you're donating, you also got a chance to win some money. It's good towards MonsterBass.com. 
good for anything but their subscriptions. We'll do the give of the show. Uh, other than that, what else did we say? Oh, member only stream. We're doing a member only stream, only for members, going down April 13th. It's a Tuesday. Child's Coming up real froze. soon. Who's froze? Lag. Oh, uh, well, bear with me, people. All right. Well, anyway, so member only stream, April 13th is a Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you guys want to join in on that, you got to be a member on the Shark Deuce level or on the Snorlax level, and you can come in and check it out. It'll be a lot of fun. So we got something planned for you guys. And then, you know, Paul, we took a trip to hell this last weekend. Ha, ha, real quick, five-second recap. How did that go for you? Uh, five-second recap was a 45-minute walk uh, with the kayaks. Uh, it, it, I, I got beat again. I got stomped fishing. Not great. Uh, but... But I got to drag my kayak uphill for three quarters of a mile. So that was fun. It was really tough. And uh, it I felt exposed. Like my fitness, I just felt exposed. It wasn't great. <laughs> hey, man, I, I've been working out a lot, and it didn't do any better for me. So <laughs> it was we dragged the Hobies so far, you guys. You'll see a video later. But real quick, Jerry Jones with a $20, and he, he does the woot emoji. I love that. Uh, $20 super chat. You are fantastic, my friend. Thank you so much. And don't worry, guys. I'll add all this stuff up at the end and figure out what I owe down here. We got you. We got you. Don't worry. Uh, all right. Is that enough updates? I Hell hope was so. cool. We went exploring. There's a video coming up later. Let's talk to Don. We got stuff to do. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna we're gonna do our we're gonna do our Q of the D, our question of the day. This is a fun one. Jeff, you wanna hit it? Or uh yeah, Jeff, do you wanna tell us about Jeff? Because dude, people are the, the chat is showing up. Jeff Lauer comes in with 20 bucks. Yo. Appreciate you, bro. Yes. Sharing the fishing love with all Cha's rules. I love that. So great. <laughs> Jeff Flower, you're fantastic. We're lo I'm loving this. This is awesome. Yeah. You guys, you are, guys are awesome. You guys are showing up and showing out. Keep it rolling. You guys rock. So Q with right. a D. Q with okay. a D. To, as always, you these are just random things that I think about during the week that I'm like, why this popped in my head? I don't know, but it, now it's in the show. My question for you is, how long do you go in between washing a pair of jeans? <laughs> I'll go first. I'll go first. I, I'm not. A, I'm not ashamed to admit out, it. Out yourself. I go at least bare minimum four weeks in between washing my jeans. <laughs> they go into a pile right next to my dresser, and I, and I'll just like look up and be like, dude, I have not washed these in months. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. That's just who I am. It's down in my. It's that's just me. Uh, and I'm also. I'll, I'm also gonna say this. I'm not a sweatpants guy. I'm not a shorts like 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 shorts dude either. When I come home, I get right into jeans, and that's what I'm wearing for the rest of the day. And yeah, oh I don't care. Friend. That's Don's, me. Don's what? video dropped. We got him back. Don, we got him back. Charles, no? Yes. I don't have a lot of jeans, actually. Okay. Somebody on the chat just said, you must have you, a lot of jeans. I have like he, three pairs of pants that I wear. He, he doesn't wash them for four weeks, so he only needs one pair. And See then what I'm saying? For a day, he just walks around like bottomless party. <laughs> that's how I roll, them. man. All right, I, that's my answer. I, I have to further out you. So I have hung out with Paul in his younger years when we were in college and we went on camping trips. And homeboy, at one point, there was one time I remember that he had come off hot off of like multiple camping trips. It was like weeks in a row where he was at his cottage uh, on Lake St. Clair on the Canada side. And then he went on like another family trip. And then he came on the rugby trip and he was wearing a pair of swim shorts, which were the American flag swim shorts. But the white on the shorts was not white. <laughs> no. And when we were hanging out, he happened to drop the knowledge that he had not taken those off or changed them in that entire time. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like a guy. six week romp. What are you going to do? This is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, Don, how long do you go between washing jeans? Well, you know, you know, the great thing about Paul is if you can't see him, you can smell him. So you'll never lose him. It's not going to be an it. issue. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is, this is Florida. We don't wear jeans. So, uh, yeah, I don't even think I own a pair of jeans anymore, man. It's that was short. a terrible question for a Florida. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a really – what a what an air ball on my part. Wow. Right. Cool. Yeah. All right, how about – how about between washing shorts? <laughs> oh, man, uh, one time. <laughs> it's Florida. It's always 180% yeah. humidity. Yeah, you oh know. Oh, my gosh. So true. All right, before I answer, welcome Candy Fiala. 
Fiala, nailed the last name maybe, uh, to the Burly Bunch Elite. You're awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining. And then we've got a super chat from Dave, oh my gosh, Rossnake? Rossnake? <laughs> <laughs> to the crushing last names today. Cheers. But cheers to you. $20 super chat. You guys are fantastic. Awesome. Uh, I love that. At, Chaz, you said khakis are greater than jeans. What are you wearing? Khakis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. What? All right. Well, all right. So for me, jeans, I am a sweatpants guy, dude. I'll rock sweatpants all day. But I, I owned a gym for like six years and worked in fitness for 16. So <laughs> I'm like sweatpants, workout shorts all the time. I would wash those every single time. And with jeans, I, it's just a habit, man. I just do the same thing. So I don't know I'm how you wash get in the habit time. of not doing it, but I'm out of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on to the show me, on to the reason we're here today. Uh, we always like to start, it is, a, it is a show about fishing. We know you're an outdoorsman. So give us some of your, uh, Don, hit us with, not to, not to say that you need to be credentialed to be on the show because you don't. <laughs> But hit, us with your, hit us with your uh, hit us with your out, outdoorsiness background. Oh man, I uh, started fishing when I was two. Uh, my dad would drag me along, so it's been uh, I would say how many years? Forty-two years of fishing now. Um, started hunting when I was twelve in Michigan. I was born and raised in the Thumb, uh, so I've hunted everything up there pretty much. I mean, no bear or elk, but everything else I've chased around. Um, man. My first job, 16 years old, was selling guns at a hardware store. And Which one? Uh, it was a it's a True Value hardware store in Lapeer, you know, over here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was my first job, man. 16 years old, I was selling guns, and uh, you know, I was bit by the bug. And pretty much, pretty much every job I've had um, since I was 16 um, has been hunting, fishing, you know, guns, archery. Um, you know, I'm a Certified bowsmith. Um, I've studied under some amazing archers. I used to shoot professional archery for TSE. Um, you know, I've been fishing. I've been building fishing rods um, for 27 years now. Um, I've worked for Bass Pro Shops. I've worked for Gander Mountain. I've worked for many small mom and pop shops. Um, and now I work for um, one of the world's largest uh, manufacturer of fishing rod parts, American Tackle down here in florida wow your resume is as long as a rite aid receipt that is <laughs> not as long as a cvs but you'll get there not quite I a cvs but we'll get there you got 20 more years you got a cvs receipt how yeah, it's many pages how, how long have you how long have you when did you move to florida like how long ago was that uh almost exactly seven years now um i moved down here to work for american tackle i was actually on their pro staff prior and uh, they liked the work I was doing, helping them at shows. And uh, they said, hey, would you like to move to Florida from Michigan? And uh, we couldn't pack fast enough. Yeah. You're like, pack? No, it's all sold with the house. I'm moving. <laughs> like, that's awesome. So, uh, dude, I am. this show is going to take so many right angles. Um, <laughs> that's what no, we we're, do. We're, Our, it's we're, 58 episodes in. You know that. <laughs> we're getting, we're going on a tangent. I'm already pre We're going on a journey. A journey. <laughs> no, we're going on a journey. Before we get to any of the good stuff, we're going to get to other good stuff. So <laughs> we talked about being uh, kind of into the archery world. Michigan's kind of an archery, kind of a big deal. I mean, oh, yeah. Fred, the Fred Bear legacy, and there are some, there's definitely some like, premier like handmade old school bow like dudes that have either resided or had set up shop in michigan um i know i made a bow when i was uh like 18 it was garbage um but i wanted to like make one so awfully bad um what was what was your first bow that you uh have you ever made like a uh, like an all wood like a a you like a bow like a like a traditional bow before? We never got into making those. Um, I had friends that did them, so I shot many of them, uh, yeah. long bows, curious bows. But um, and you know, one thing I never got into, I, I could probably do it. You know, I'm a research guy, so um, I have made fishing tackle. You know, I make fishing rods. Uh, I'm a gunsmith. I can you know take bows apart crossbows apart whatever you need to do build arrows uh i can do all that but i just never made knives or bows so but uh, it's uh it's amazing i love that you just threw knives in there that it was like something that you thought about though 
Uh, I've got a good friend. I got a good friend actually over in the pump still that uh, has a beautiful forge, and I hung out there many times. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> uh, so, do you have a brand for your? And we're going to talk about this more later. But for the custom rods, what's your? What is your brand? It is 407 Custom Rods. I was hoping you're going to say that because I saw some of the photos that were on yeah. your site, dude. I don't. For for people who have, go to autismanglers.com or as for if there's a better place to go look, but I, dude, what I saw on you go to the custom rods section of autismanglers.com, and I was like, dude, shut up! Like <laughs> they are, it's so cool. Legit. Like it's they are so awesome. Highly recommend. While people are, if you're on chat or you've got a, a, a the World Wide Web in front of you on your pocket supercomputer. Dude, go look at them. They are amazing. Utilize all the on, full strength of the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's all on Facebook. I don't have a website, you know, for that kind of. I I really, man, that's like one of my one of my many full time jobs is doing that. So um, I don't advertise yeah. a lot, and uh, if somebody wants one, you know, you may be waiting 10, 12 weeks to get one. So. <laughs> but it'll but that, be awesome and custom. And those are all the best. Like you were just talking about knife makers. Like that's how it works with a knife maker. Like you get somebody who's really good. How long are you gonna wait for like a? How long are you gonna wait for an order? A couple of years. Oh yeah. That's just how it goes. If you want, if you want what you want, dude, just look at the pictures. You're gonna be like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> Sign me up. Put my name on the list. That's so check sweet. them out. Thank us later. Yo, Chris Shu. Oh yeah, I saw it. Yeah, Chaz just posted the link by the way too, and there's the Facebook link. Boom. Chris Shu with a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much, my dude. So like you. <laughs> Like you, Mike upgrade. Your mic upgrade. He's probably just seen this for the oh. first time. This is the new like setup. The new setup. You're allowed to see it. He says uh, he does have a question. I think here. So, Don, if you were on a three-day kayak camping trip, what would you bring? And then Jeff, and then Paul. Less importantly, at the end. <laughs> <laughs> on a three-day kayak camping trip. Oh, uh, jeez. And I do kayak, so I know we need to be as light as possible. So it would definitely be a, um, you know, uh, a hammock, um, some fishing rods, and a little bit of tackle. And, you know, uh, and a fire starter. That's always important. Ooh, I like it. So Paul and I, you guys don't even know this, we packed fully for a four-day river float kayak camping trip. And then we never did it because what happened to the Grand River, like one of our main rivers in Michigan, uh, was there was a huge E. coli outbreak and we couldn't wow. go in the water. <laughs> so we were packed. We were ready. That's when you guys remember when we did the uh, we did a camping trip video and we ate all of the uh, the camp meals, the ready made meals like that. was Those were for that trip. And they were about like a year and a half old at that point, but they last forever. Um, <laughs> so. To that point, I would say ready-made meals because they take up zero space. They're easy to cook. And with things like oatmeal, we found out you can just scoop pond water and like cook it in there because it just cooks with that heating element and doesn't touch the food. Uh, so as long as you're smart and you don't open the food container, you're good. Uh, so I would bring like those. I agree with the hammock all day, every day. If you guys don't camp in a hammock, step it up. <laughs> like Get on a new okay. level. Hammock camping is camping that's the real deal we we only bring hammocks now on our trips every single time and we camp a lot like we'll hit those rustic spots a lot uh and we're just like all right what site has trees cool most of them because it's michigan so then we just string them up let's go it's so much fun um love the fire starter idea i've brought like uh, a life straw just in case you never know what's going to happen and then i would say uh because we have the hobies we have our camp chair which is cool because we don't have to like bring a separate chair the chair comes out of those so that's rad um gosh i don't know maybe no that's it i, I would I, I would agree i'd try to pack as light as i can mostly focus i would focus mostly on fishing tackle like i'm gonna fish the entire time <laughs> what about you paul i'm gonna go ahead and reference our kayak camping episode so go check that bad boy out early on mm -hmm. and i'm also gonna say the one thing that n neither of you would have to say you you bearded sons of guns but i'm gonna go with i'm going with uh sunblock spf oh, yeah. 35 or 50, and I'd say bring two of them. What is you know that? what? And then I want to enjoy my time, okay? Hey, like, melanoma... I want to have fun on day two. <laughs> Agreed. Melanoma is no joke. I would agree with that. I'll just ask you for your sunscreen. Yeah, that's Got fine. It. Cool, moving on. I'll have enough for, like, the next four people that float down and forgot. Like, I'm, I, I got you guys. <laughs> Love it. Right on. 
So uh, I want to get uh, getting in further into the show notes, avoiding tangents, which I really want to go on. But tell us about kind of um, what prompted you to start Autism Anglers. It's such a big undertaking. I mean, I don't people you can stumble into things like this. To do something like this intentionally takes so much more than to like join something like this. So kind of what prompted you to start doing what you're doing and then kind of what keeps you what keeps you in it? Yeah, so um, actually we're, we just celebrated our three, an- three year anniversary on March 25th. Um, I kind of call it the two year anniversary because 2020 was a wash. Um, we, kinda, we shut down from April to December, yeah. didn't do anything. We didn't send out anything. Uh, so I, I call it the two-year anniversary, but it was really our official third. So, uh, but no, um, you know, like I said, I've been in the outdoor industry for man, 27, 28 years now, uh, longer than that, um, almost 30 years. Um, and so I know fishing, I know hunting, I know the people in the industry being where I'm at now in you know manufacturing. Um, Six, five or six years ago now, uh, my son was diagnosed autistic, um, you know, high functioning autism. And as I was learning, I wanted to let other people know what I was learning. And who do I know? I know anglers. Um, so, you know, after thinking about it, what can I do? Um, you know, what can I start? You know, I want it to be legit. I want people to take me seriously. Um, you, you mentioned the beard. I actually reached out to um, a bunch of friends who are bearded guys. Um, and, you know, I talked to them. I said, hey, guys, I got this idea. I said, you know, how can I get this started? Because it does take quite a bit to start an official um, nonprofit organization. And I come up with the idea. I said, you know what? I'm going to build 12 fishing rods. They're going to be numbered 1 through 12, and I'm going to sell them. And that is what is going to fund getting the organization started. And within days, all 12 of them were sold. Um, I had all the money. And uh, I actually went to, I drove up to North Carolina to a big barbecue bash. And uh, they also handed me a big check up there. And, you know, I come back and, you know, got everything started, got all the paperwork going. And it's just snowballed from there. Um, Originally, it was designed just as a way for me to bring awareness um, to autism you know, through angling. So through two anglers, uh, because that's what I know. I know fishermen. Um, but immediately after we're, after starting it, you know, I had somebody say, hey, I've got a bunch of tackle. Can you find somebody on the spectrum to give a tackle to? Sure. That is snowballed. Um, <laughs> in these, three, in these uh, I guess, two and a half years now, um, we have sent out probably close to 3,000 pounds of fishing tackle um, that has been donated. And that's all free of charge to anybody that applies. So, it, and you mentioned kids, kids and adults both. I mean, I know quite a few adults on the spectrum, and we send out usually two to three pounds of tackle, um, and it's all done by donation. So, all the donations we get help pay for boxes, help pay for postage, which is about ten to twelve dollars a box, um, just for postage. And it, it's horrible. Um, but you know, I've got a garage just full of fishing tackle, and we just we send out boxes all the time. Um, and it's just, it's become a real passion. So that's so awesome to hear. And, uh, I know two guys that have some tackle that they definitely don't need and could possibly be donating that as well as the super chats from tonight, you guys. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, that that's awesome, man. I, I really appreciate the background there. So I, I was curious too, and this is where like, we'll go as far as you're comfortable going, but yeah. You said your son was diagnosed five to six years ago. My daughter, my youngest daughter, was actually diagnosed just last year. Like we've we've had her, uh, we've done like some ABA with her as well. But she is also high functioning, very intelligent, um, but kind of like just does what she wants to do. You know, <laughs> dances to her own music. You know, I love it. She's so unique and creative and funny. But uh, we, I was curious about your struggle with this because you say bring awareness to autism, right? Um, do you, did you find like in your experience, it was really difficult to have him diagnosed? Did you find yourself struggling to say like, what can I do to help support my child in this circumstance? Cause I know for me personally, we were like, okay, she's obviously, she's like, she was struggling to communicate with us. Like she didn't really talk until she was three, three and a half. Like didn't say anything like no verbal stuff. Uh, and all, now she won't stop talking, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Um, but like, 
to start that journey was so crazy hard. Like to just, who do we talk to? Where do we go? Uh, you, you run a gamut of tests and then like to, to amount to maybe they say, okay, your child's diagnosed with uh, ASD. And now potentially you can seek this avenue. Right. And then they provide you sources of like support. And then it takes another like month after month after month. My wife and I struggled with this. So I thought I found that really difficult, that pathway. And I've, I'm sure I'm positive. There are many, you know, children and adults, like you, you mentioned that you're working with, for example, that are not, they're going undiagnosed, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you, do you feel the same way or did you have like a similar pathway as I did? Yeah. It, I mean, really similar. I mean, we kind of, we knew, you know, we knew something was up, you know, there was mm -hmm. lack of eye contact, you know, some certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we, we knew, you know, um, my wife and I both are, you know, researchers and, you know, we're always looking at that kind of thing. So it was like, it's one of the things, you know, we know what's going on. Um, we want to get, we want to be able to get him the proper help, um, you know, and then going through the testing for the official diagnosis. Like Florida is an amazing state. Um, you know, if you had the diagnosis, there's a ton of programs down here, um, which is, I mean, it's incredible. It's one of the best states to be in. Um, you know, when you have a, a, a child or a loved one with, with autism, um, because there are so many resources. So, you mm -hmm. know, getting that official diagnosis is like, well, we kind of hope it's that and not something else that we don't, you know, that's uh, maybe a little more difficult, you know, and, right. you know, autism, is it difficult? It can be, especially at first. I mean, you're a year in, um, it, um, it gets easier, um, because like you said, you love how she is. And, uh, I mean, Landon is amazing. I wouldn't change him for anything. I mean, he is the coolest kid in the world, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing. It, it's hard still, you know? I mean, you even, you know, you think about it and you're like, man, you know, what's going to happen in the future? You know, what's the future hold for him? Um, yeah. All that kind of stuff. And, you know, it saddens you a little bit, but you're like, man, you know what? He's the coolest kid in the world. He's going to be fine. Yeah. Can you guys can you guys talk a little bit about because you talk about bringing awareness and because autism is like a spectrum scale, right? So when you know when people talk about being a spectrum disorder, talk about um, if you can give some color for people who don't know what that really means and like it's something that kind of get can get glossed over. Like explain why it's really important that people understand why it's a spectrum disorder and how that can also play into getting a diagnosis if maybe you're not like really deep into the spectrum, right? Can you talk into kind of both of those things? Yeah. So, um, what it's a neurological disorder. We, nobody really knows what causes it. Um, it's, um, it, it's all kinds of different development issues. Um, it could be speech. Like I see Chad just wrote on there, you know, nonverbal 10 year old, some of them are nonverbal. Um, you know, I know adults who, you know, still have to wear diapers, um, you know, you know, my son has problems uh, getting dressed, making eye contact, um, you know, socially, things like that. A little, you know, social awkwardness. Um, it, there's so much of that. Um, you know, one of the it's things, a bigger pool of like things that you can look at instead of just being like, if you're not this, like you don't count. Right? Exactly. And I'm sure I'm sure uh, you guys have heard <laughs> it. Um, but one thing they say all, all the time and one of my favorite sayings is when you met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism because every <laughs> single case is different. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. That, that was like the big thing for me, which is why I, I feel the diagnosis process is so difficult for them. And there's so many different steps that you have to go through. And then like, you know, it, it's great that Florida is a really good uh, state that takes care of you guys for that. Michigan supports us fully too. It's just like, like it's, you got to jump through a bunch of flaming hoops to get to that point. And then when you get there, it's like, Oh, you're fully covered. So like all the, all the therapy, all the help, all the assistance that we get from the state is covered, which is fantastic. Like I don't have amazing insurance. It's just covered. It's awesome. Um, but we're able to, to take care of her and like help her out. And it's really cool to see her growth over time. And, you know, I, I saw some of, uh, I'm sorry, your son's name is, is Landon, Landon, Landon. right? Yep. So Landon, I saw some of his videos on your Facebook page. <laughs> like, I love it. Uh, <laughs> that he just takes your phone and like takes video. It's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, like my daughter does a lot of very similar things and I'm sure they differ in a lot of different ways too, but that, that's where I, uh, I hear you say high functioning and I feel the same way. And it's funny. Like even high functioning is just this term that gets thrown around. And you're like, yeah, yeah, but to what level? Like, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean for them long term? You mentioned the future. Like, 
that's definitely one of the scariest things for me. But I know it's like, dude, I'll just wait to worry. Like she's she's coming along so well now. It's it's just awesome to see. Uh, so I, you know, again, just I love that you're bringing awareness to it, and that you know, I, I I've seen lately too, like more people on on social media, uh, you know, individuals and uh, young adults and adults living with autism, say on like Instagram or TikTok, bringing a lot of awareness to it too, which is really cool to see as well. So it's it's, it's cool to see where everything's going with this. And, you know, I love that we, we can get support where we need it. Um, but yeah, tell us more about what you're doing with these, with these kids and these adults through the program. Like, uh, so we provide them tackle, like, do you take them out fishing? Like, what is, what does all that look like? Is that Landon, yeah. like, in the background? Yeah, he's yeah, yelling for his dog. He's trying to get his dog inside. He's um, like, Ryan, I'll tell you all about the program. What do you want to know? Yeah. All, right, all right, here right. we go. <laughs> so, yeah, those first, you know, that first year the, the and into the second year, you know, it was one of those things, like, what are we going to do with the future of autism and anger? What kind of things do we want to do, you know? Yeah. We want to do fishing trips. We want to do, you know, um, outdoor events where maybe we, uh, you know, we have everybody at a pond or a lakeside and we take a bunch of kids fishing, give them rods, things like that. And, uh, you know, we are still a young organization and that's all in the future. Like I said, mm-hmm. you know, COVID kind of killed a lot of that for a while, or I can't say killed it, put it on the back burner for a while. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the awesome anglers program, that's our free tackle. Um, we do that. In fact, I've got right now, unfortunately funds are a little bit low for shipping. I mean, it's come, it always comes in. It seems like when funds get low, and I got boxes stacking up, you know, I have like 12 people that need them and they're sitting here and then all of a sudden, you know, I'll get a donation. Like somebody will throw $500 at us. It's like, awesome. You know what? Those nice. boxes are out of here. You know, we send them. Uh, so, you know, that's the only thing really we had going right now besides, um, you know, trying to hopefully there'll be some more events down here open up. Uh, I don't know if you saw the trailer we just got. We just got a 16 foot enclosed trailer and that's like a little mobile showroom. I mean, we've got nice. all kinds of. Can, can, can you hear yeah. me? Okay, we're awesome. just gonna we're just gonna roll. You guys know what we look like. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, right. We don't need to see Paul. We've seen Paul a thousand. Smell times. me. It's all good. Fifty-eight times. You can yeah. W- get a whiff of Paul. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, That's fine. We're roll with it. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, we just got that enclosed trailer, you know, all done with uh, donations. Um, got that thing all wrapped up, and you know, we pull that behind us, and it's a it's a big billboard. So we can go to these events, we can give tackle away, we can sell shirts and hats, and you know, all that kind of stuff, and help spread awareness. Uh, you know, we got games for the kids, fishing games, casting games, things like that. Um, I'm working with a company right now to get our own brand of fishing rods going. So kids rods that are going to be in all the different colors that we'll be able to give to the kids. We'll be able to sell that kind of thing. Um, the fishing trips are coming. Um, awesome fishing is what we're calling it. Um, yeah. We have a lot of captains reaching out to us that want to take families fishing. Um, we've raffled off a few of those in the past in some of our raffles and great times. In fact, um, the gentleman up in Saginaw who took a family fishing uh, walleye fishing last summer and I still get tons of pictures they've become really good friends and he loves taking the kids out fishing so it's it's one of those bonds man once you get around these kids and adults it's a bond that lasts forever so I love it man and while we were saying that and YouTube was being a jerk and breaking down a whole bunch but uh hopefully you guys caught most of that and Skype is going, yeah, you know what? We're rolling with the punches, you guys. But uh, as we said before, I'll just keep saying since things keep breaking up, all Super Chats are going to this guy tonight. So we're going to send some donations. Hopefully we can help out with some of that shipping. That would be amazing. And then we need to buy some hats too because I definitely want to wear some of those and, and those shirts when they come out. I'm actually going to get one of those. I want one of those decals for my kayak. Oh, yeah, the decals too. Oh, I'm going to I'm Just, literally go, no. I'm going online. I'm gonna buy yeah. a handful of them right now. Yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll buy buy me some. Uh, all right. So we, we, yeah, we'll do the things. All right. So Pima six two three five dollar super chat. Thank you so much. It says take a drink for the kids. Also, Paul, teach me a loop knot. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to tie that. I'm imp- improved only. Improved loop knot. Got it. Okay. And then our boy Ted Cushion, friend of the show, also oh, yeah. a uh, amazing angler that does, I don't know, maybe some guiding over here on a certain river called the Flat River, which is fantastic. He says the first $100 donation takes a trip with Flat River Outfitters, which is his guiding company. So 
First hundred bucks. I mean, find your way to Michigan somehow if you're not in Michigan. If but you're I into guess, like giant smallmouth. If, if you want to catch bigs, he only helps you catch bigs. Like we don't <laughs> catch small ones. I went out with him. I like only caught big fish. So if you want to go out, you want to catch some awesome smallies on like a trophy smallmouth river, come up here. First hundred dollar donation. You got it. And I'll take care. I'll connect the dots. Like you said, I'll make it work. Um, uh, awesome. You guys are fantastic. Let's let's keep it rolling. Where are we at, Paul? We got we got show notes. We're burning yeah, I'm, through them. I'm over here. I'm trying to buy like four decals <laughs> right now. I want one for my truck and one for my boat. Why don't you just All give right. me four seconds? No, I got yeah. you. So no, no one seconds. Of the, one of the yeah, one of the things that uh like I was really curious about was um talk about like awareness, right? And awareness can mean a lot of different things, but when you mm -hmm. talk about like okay, I want you know anglers to be aware. Um, or to bring awareness to starting with anglers, like through fishing, um, about like about autism, all the things that are kind of like attached to it. What are some of the things that you're hoping that people take away and are getting by, you know, being exposed to, uh, you know, autism anglers? Like, what what are you hoping that people kind of walk away with? You know, one of the biggest things is the misunderstanding of what autism really is, and I I'm guilty of this as well. You know, um, you know, before before my son came along. You know, you're in a restaurant and there's a kid screaming. You're like, man, shut your brat up, right? Uh, I mean, we all we've all done it. Um, and you're you know you're in the store and kids are you know what? It it opens your eyes. And I tell people about that because it really does. You know, maybe that kid's having a meltdown. Um, meltdowns are I mean are a real thing. They're not a fit. You know, it they're actually there's sensory issues going on. There's something that's going on and they don't know how to express what the problem is. And it comes out. Like for, I don't know if people, like if you've never experienced this, I find it hard to believe that maybe you haven't in your whole life. Like if you went to a school that had like more than a, you know, I don't know, 500 kids in it, you probably saw somebody with autism have like a meltdown. Jeff, yeah. tell me, that, explain to me exactly like how it. viscerally real and different a meltdown is than I am too and I don't get to paint right now. Explain the difference because it's, yeah uh, it, when you see it and you're thinking about it, it's so obvious. Yeah, it's, you know, basically for, for my daughter, for example, there's literally nothing you can do to calm her down. Um, so there's like, she'll throw something, you'll say like, we don't do that. And then she gets mad because she did the thing that she knows is bad. And then she melts down. So it's like, okay, so what's best for her at that point is like separation. So we just like take her somewhere where she wants, she wants to decompress, we've found. Uh, and everybody's different. Like, like Don's mentioned, everybody's different. So with her, we've just found she needs to decompress. She likes to uh, kind of put her headphones on and like watch something on kids YouTube, right? Like get her on her iPad, just like be away. When she watches her, her kids YouTube, she'll go in her room. She closes her curtains. She calls them uh, her drapes. And then we turn off the lights and we close the door. So it's like decompression. There's, there's just like this lack of sensory going on. Uh, and, and when we take her to, you know, before COVID times, like when you could go to uh, a, a kid's play place area, right? Like she'd be in the kid's play place. There'd be like 20 kids running around and she's fine for like 20, 30 minutes. And then it's like done, like I'm done. And there's no winding down. It's just immediately done. She'll come to you. She'd be like, we got to go. <laughs> it's like, she'll just tell us now, like, I want to go home. And we're like, all right, we're leaving. And like, it, it's when you say like, no, no, go play. Like we did that in the beginning before we knew what was going on. We're like, no, you're like, what do you mean? We we're not leaving yet. You know, we, we got our, our McDonald's happy meals. Like we're going to eat these. We're going to hang out. And like, no, you got to leave. As we learned, we're like, we know what happens now, but that that's the thing with the awareness, right? Is, and, and I love that this month is all about that too. And that's why we wanted to have you on the, on the first day of the month. Right. Um, is that, like Paul mentioned, you've probably seen this. You've probably been around this and you're just like, uh, or, or like you said, Don, like tell your kid to shut up. Like, no, we yeah. don't, <laughs> you don't understand what's going on. You don't know. And obviously that doesn't help it. So please don't say stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> That's not yeah. helping. Even, even if it's not autism going on, that doesn't help. Uh, but yeah, it's like, you don't know what's going on. And the kid doesn't know what's going on. The kid's just realizing there's just over sensory production right now. Like, just get me out of here. And they don't know how to, how to, how to process or handle that sometimes. So, you know, we got to learn alongside of them. And, you know, for me personally, from going from feeling like a complete failure as a dad, like I can't figure this out. I can't solve this problem, square peg, round hole to like, okay, like this is okay. Like this is normal. 
this is fine. And you just got to figure out how to like work with her on it. And now we work together through it. So it's, it's really helped like my relationship with my daughter a lot. Cause I used to get so frustrated. I'm like, what do I do? Like, I can't calm her down. And then you're around people and you're like, what? just grab her suitcase her. And then I run out of the building. I'm like, don't worry, I'll get out of your way. Sorry, people. <laughs> and now I'm like, you, you deal with yourselves. Like I'll handle this. <laughs> you know, like so I'm not, I don't worry about them anymore. And I don't worry about like her being upset, like let her be upset and like, we'll figure it out. And I know usually she just needs to get away. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Like, we're fine. Okay. It's helped so, so much. Um, and, you know, while I was talking about that real quick, we did have uh, Jonathan Sparks with a super chat. So thank you so much, my friend. Says, my eight-year-old son has autism, so this means a lot to me. That's awesome to hear. His name is also Landon. Hey, that's cool. And he's an amazing kid. Love the show. I've been listening to the podcast since almost the beginning. Great stuff. We. Awesome. I apologize I mean, for the first 48 <laughs> episodes. I was like, are you sure you mean great stuff? <laughs> Yo, we just got a, a $50 too. Okay. So now, now you guys come out of the woodworks. Good grief. So Christopher McVeigh, uh, kayak fishing has been highly therapeutic for me and a life-changing, oh my gosh, there's more coming in. Okay, here we, bear with me, people. Uh, and life-changing, kayak tournaments to raise more money. I have connections here in Florida, specifically Jacksonville. So you're you're like Orlando area, but Jacksonville, what? That's three, four, five hours away. It's not- that's, you know, Yeah, two, two and a half to three, yeah. That's not too far, but there you go. So Christopher McVeigh, Go check out Autism Anglers. Uh, check them out on Facebook. Check out their website. Go talk to Don. Maybe you guys could figure out some kayak tourneys. That would be super cool. That'd be uh, great. That'd be great. Yeah, we've actually had our, our second kayak. Well, last year was a kayak tournament down here in this area, in the Lakeland area. Um, this year yeah. it turned into a um, an anything goes just bass tournament. So we had guys nice. on shore. We had bass boats. We had kayaks. We had John boats. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, no, it's fantastic. And any, anything like that, um, really, yeah, please get a hold of me. I'd love to hear more about that. But, uh, oh, but yeah. Jeff, your stories, your stories, man, uh, like exact same stories with us. You know, uh, you know, for a while, you're like, really? You know, we're going to Disney. You know, you're just going to go. And then your life yeah. is miserable. So after yeah. a while, it's like, you know, you're, it's like 45 minute drive. So you're going, and it's like, you know, 20 minutes in the drive, you're like, I want to go home. It's like, after a while, you're like, all right, turn around and go home. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> Exactly. Like, yeah, hundred percent. We had to do that. I'm like, I'm not going to force you to go through this because I'm realizing how, how hard that can be for her. I'm like, why are you doing, why? Like, why would you force her to go through this? Like, just go. And it's kind of the beauty. Like now that my wife and I get it, um, you know, my, I have another daughter, she is older, she's seven going on eight. And, uh, you know, she, she does not live with autism. So she, she'll go play with the kids forever. So now we can be like, all right, I'll take Olivia and you hang out with Emma, right? And we just kind of like split it like that and it works out well. So we, we make a pretty good team now that we get it. Like nobody's getting mad about it. Nobody's getting frustrated. Like she's crying, we're crying. <laughs> that was years ago. <laughs> we don't do that as much anymore. <laughs> uh, but we also had another super chat here from Butler's Fishing. I love that you guys don't shy away from the tough topic like this. That's right, because I mean, why would we? <laughs> These are our kids. But I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, and it's, it's again, it's just so cool that you found a connection with the great outdoors, with angling. Like, I want to get back to that here, too. Yeah. Um, do you find with taking these kids to, to adults, uh, you know, out fishing or doing these tournaments or interacting with them and seeing them fishing, do you feel, and I've, I've seen a few people mention it here in chat, by the way, do you feel like that's that's something that's fun, therapeutic for them, like calming, enjoyable? Like, wh what do you notice uh, with them out there fishing? So that yeah, so um, and I meant to bring that up too because um, you know that was another thing that helped get this started. Is I was working with a veterans group, um, working with PTSD vets, um, building rods and taking them fishing, and I could see, and this was before Landon was even diagnosed. Um, I could see that it rewired their brains, even for a short period of time. If they were building a rod, they had something different to focus on in their problems. When they were on the water, it gave them something different to focus on for their problems, even if it was just for an hour. Um, and the, uh, the actually the founder of the group that I was working with has been a huge supporter um, of autism anglers. 
um, and had really had a lot of uh, information for me, the legal things, you know, getting everything started, get all your paperwork in line uh, was, was huge, and he loved the idea. So we saw the same thing, you know, with, it, with, with autism is it rewires the brain for that short period of time. If they get into it, and as you know, um, they may not be into it. Um, like Landon hates fishing, H- hates it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, he has. I mean, he caught. You know, it's funny that we had tilapia down here. I've never caught one, and he got a monster tilapia his first fish. You nice. know, and uh, but yeah. So I mean, you know, even then he was having fun when he did it. He just doesn't want to do it anymore. He's got other things yeah. he's into. But I do know, you know, many kids and adults uh, on the spectrum that do love fishing, and that's all they live for, one hundred percent. You know. A couple of them I know, um, you know, in different parts of the U.S. are wanting to become pro anglers. That's all they want to do is fish. That's all they talk about is fish. Um, so, and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure your daughter is into a certain thing, and that's her thing. You know, yeah. Landon is into a certain thing, and it changes every once in a while, but it's that certain thing. Yeah. Um, but the ones that are into fishing, that's all they talk about. That's all they can do. Um, so it does. It, you know, any it's therapy. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Um, and I hear stories. Um, and I see it, I see the smiles on their faces and hear the story and uh, it is 100%. It's a form of therapy. I love it. Yeah. My daughter is into Legos only. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah. is her jam yeah. is Lego. She has a table of them and she loves Lego friends. They're like the, they seem off brand. They're kind of weird looking <laughs> little mini dolls, but yeah, that's her jam. That's what she loves. We, we let her have her Lego time. She will play with them for like 19 hours a day if she could. Uh, but fishing, I took her fishing one time. I, I tried to take her more times, but just the one time I got her out there with a rod in her hands and she threw the whole combo in the water. She was like, <laughs> later days, I'm good. Like not Jesus. an accidental cast, just boom, I don't want to do this. And then walked away. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the things too that I, being in the fishing industry so long, you know, I have a lot of parents say, hey, you know, I would like to get my kid into fishing, but I don't know what to do, you know, and some of the things, and if you're watching and, you know, same thing, maybe you have uh, somebody in the spectrum and you want to see if they, they'll fish, you know, some of the things that I highly recommend to these parents and caretakers is number one, a leash on the rod because it's going to go in. I mean, it, it happens all the time. So a leash on the rod, just a piece of paracord, something like that, you know, barbless hooks because hooks are getting flung around. <laughs> yep. 100%. You know, if they can't swim, make sure they have a life vest on. And yes. take them, the biggest thing is take them someplace that is loaded with fish. I don't care if they're two inch bluegill. Um, take them someplace the first time that they're going to catch a ton of fish because that's how you get hooked. Yeah. It's, it's funny so- that that's not different at all from taking anyone fishing. That's what I was right? just going to say. We just talked about this and it was like <laughs> the only maybe tiny thing I would add is like just go somewhere where you know that they can be distracted by other things and you can still. Yeah. Yeah. at least sort of fish on the side so that when the fish gets caught, like you're like, Hey, you're still fishing, even though you're on a swing set, like, you know, 20 <laughs> yards away or whatever, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, bring snacks, make it fun, no pressure. And obviously safety is like whenever you're dealing with any little person who's under the age of, you know, whatever, any person, but to any be real, person, but yeah. any person, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's like the exact same advice that we gave when yeah. we got that question a couple of weeks ago. It's hilarious. I mean, you guys know, even if you take like a friend who's an adult who does not live with autism, like that you're, you should still stay away from them. I fish with Paul. Paul's been fishing longer than me. He flings lures at me every day. Like every <laughs> time days, we go four fishing. days ago. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Had it Look at the Instagram reel. Look at the TikTok. It happened again, you guys. Again, he he's like in the he's in his kayak way back behind me, and he'll go to cast. He's just so brazen with this. He'll cast past me, and the wind caught it or something. He says, and it wrapped around all of my rods right behind my head. Luckily, my rods were vertical. It's my defense mechanism. It's how it's I survive fishing time. trips. It's exactly what did last time. So what happened? That one was going. I <laughs> see what I actually happened. Didn't, was. I didn't pull the film, which really makes me upset. I'm kind of mad at myself. I need to go get it. I yeah. cast a normal cast, but uh, when I went to like drop the bail, my my finger actually hit the line as it was spooling out, and it just like slowed it down. And then when I finally grabbed it, 
it like jerked the line and swung it directly into your kayak. So yes, maybe I was casting too close to your boat. Maybe I don't know. I can't say for sure. But yeah, there was an inadvertent. There's an inadvertent grab. You know, mistakes mistakes happen. This one specifically, maybe I could cost you your life. I don't know. I, I will say everybody on Instagram and I I mess this up and will not. Yeah. The next time you inevitably yeah. cast at me, they said cut the line, take his lure, you win. You know what's and gonna I was make like, next time for sure I'm doing that. What's gonna make you really upset is you're gonna do it next and then I'm gonna walk away with like a brand new bait and you're gonna be like, son of a it's gonna be like a thirty dollar swim bait. Yeah. <laughs> as soon to the, yeah, as soon as you regain consciousness, you can have my swim. I'll have all those barbed hooks right in my form. I'll be like, haha, showed you. Uh, <laughs> 17 ot treble just like oh, God. through your forearm. I love oh, that. gosh. So uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the, while you guys were talking about some of that stuff, I know one of the things that has many times as I've like come into contact with with like people with autism and I've like experienced, I've like watched parents have to, you know, come to grips with something like that whole, I'm stopping everything that I'm saying. immediately. It, it happened. It happened. it happened. Somebody, somebody wants to go fishing. Uh, Candy Fiala, who just, who just joined yep. the Burley bunch elite has donated a hundred dollars. So, <laughs> so, uh, Candy, uh, they can hear me right now, by the way. So Candy, cool. put your email in chat. No one else touch. will see it. I Only touch. me and Jeff will see it. Yeah. And I'll get that to Jeff who will send it to Ted. Yo, if you want to go fishing with Ted, we got you. That will be hooked up. I don't know if Ted knew that was going to happen today. <laughs> gosh, Ted's thanks. like, well, here we go. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. You're so uh, awesome. Thank you, Candy. That's so yes, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, That's amazing. She's, uh, we get a so, lot of boxes out the door with that. Exactly. Yeah. So they say yeah. uh, doing as much as I can for the kids. I also have family with autism. So, hey, we appreciate you. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think we I think we can ship a few boxes, Don. I think we can I love do it. That. Definitely <laughs> ship some boxes out. So, so yes. one of the things while you guys are talking that just got my brain going is like one of my, I consider myself a pretty patient person and I, I used to think I was patient. Then I became a parent and I realized I was an invalid. And then I've kind of like grown my patience becoming a parent. And then what I've really noticed about myself that like my, one of my pet peeves that's like I'm realizing is like the cornerstone of my personality is like, I don't handle extremely what I perceive to be irrational things very well. And I know that I can just, I can sense that like I would struggle with this. Cause like when my son is doing something, that's just like, what, what is a two year old going to do? You know, when they're encountered by anything difficult, they're just going to, they're just going to throw a fit. Right. And like when my son drinks milk, like he just did this, he has like a fork in one hand spaghetti in his mouth and he just grabs his cup with like his like pinky and his thumb. And then obviously spilled it everywhere. And it was just like my brain, like I get upset for no reason at all. And I have to like instantly suppress that. I cannot, I would really struggle, especially at first. And especially with someone who's undiagnosed, I would, I would really struggle. Like I would probably go, I know that, it, especially not having any exposure. And if I didn't have something where someone was like, Hey, this, just so you know, like this is like maybe someone who's on the spectrum. If I had like no exposure and no knowledge, I would really, my personality would not mesh well with that. Uh, it's a learned thing, man. I, I used yeah. to be the most impatient person in the world, but uh, yeah, no, Landon has really, uh, he's made me unbelievable, more patient than I ever thought a person could be. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. I am extremely impatient, and Paul fishes with me and knows these things. Uh, so he is probably surprised every day that I survive. Uh, but yeah, it is definitely. I find myself becoming more and more patient. I found more than anything, I like my anxiety levels were palpable, like uh, just anxiety through the roof of like, how is she going to react to this? What if she melts down? How am I going to handle it? Oh God, we got to go to Target. Now what are we going to do? She's not going to want to leave the Lego section. And when I tell her we got to go home, she's going to melt down. And then I'm going to drag her out the door. Like literally this was my life. And now it's like, look at the Legos as long as you want. Hey, yep. are you ready to go? <laughs> and instead, like I used to do this thing. And by used to, I mean very recently still did. And I need to stop doing this. And I'm forcing myself to stop doing this. But I would do the parent thing, the count to three, the count to three. And then she just like, she, she's so smart. It doesn't work. 
<laughs> she she knew it was coming and she would wait till three and she'd be like one okay yeah it's like a game now she's like okay still two, going two okay two yeah yeah okay cool and then she's like three okay i'm going and i was like gosh dang it it's like it doesn't work doesn't work don't do it so i had to become more patient than that like i can't force her to do anything so it's more about being a part of a team with her i'm like i i have to come to an agreement like she's an adult yeah. <laughs> more than anything else with my with my seven-year-old i can be like do this thing because i told you to and she's like okay fine and yeah. like with olivia it's just like okay how can we settle this problem and then we sit down at like a big meeting table and we come to an agreement <laughs> and we sign yeah. the paperwork and like all right we're gonna brush our teeth tonight <laughs> yeah Cool, cool, cool. Punish, you know, you send them to the room, don't work. Punishments don't work. You can't make them stand in the corner. You can't, I mean, you know, spankings don't work. Yeah, none yeah. of that works. It doesn't work. You know, you just have to just sit back and let it do what you got to do. <laughs> you know, if you laugh it off, you know, make it a game, you know, you can immediately make it work. You know, like, yeah. you know, nine years old and we we're still putting our shorts on inside out, um, shoes on the wrong feet. You know, you just kind of laugh and like, get over here, you know, I'll help you. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. Dude, every day she has to wear, she used to do this all winter long. She has to wear summer clothes. So she would put on <laughs> shorts and a t-shirt and I'd be like, it's not summer, baby. And she's like, why? <laughs> like every time, just like, why? I'm like, I know. I ask myself the same thing every day. Why is it not summer? I agree. I would love to wear summer clothes. I would love for it to be summer because I can go frogging at that point. But it's not summer, <laughs> unfortunately. And then, like, she'll switch out, and she always wears, like, a dress and pants, and she tucks her dress in the front of her <laughs> pants. <laughs> so come out, we're like, mm, hang on. <laughs> I'll fix that. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, patience. Do, key. So, well, it's – I find that it – okay, so I'm going to – I got to keep going. I find that it becomes more than patience because it becomes a lot about like intentionally taking yourself out of the equation. You just like realize how selfish you are. Oh yeah. Because that's what it ultimately is. It's like, you just don't realize that like you're upset because like your day is being taken up by something that's like not you or like time that you want to be on your phone or working or watching a TV show or whatever is like being impeded because like you're having to do something that you don't want to do. Like, it's just amazing. Like, you have to just be like, I'm going to delete myself. This is not about me right now. It's 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 definitely a learned thing, but I just, uh, it's so much more. I feel I feel like it would be so much more if you were dealing with someone who's on the spectrum because of the level at which you have to, like, immediately, like, remove your ego from the situation. Like yeah. you said, it's a learned thing. You know, it takes time. You know, you're not going to do it right away. You're going to you're gonna struggle. We, you know, I still struggle um but yeah yes, i mean it's, I suck. It's, 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 it's like anything it's like you know it's like using a fishing rod or you know anything you know it's learned you're learn over time you know um and it's it's i mean i'm never gonna stop learning that's the great thing about it yeah 100 percent. because it's not something you can just sweep under a rug and make go away <laughs> like you can't make right. it go away <laughs> So uh, it is what it is. We live with it, right? And I, like I said, I suck, but I'm a year into this, so I'm fully content on getting better. Uh, like I said, the countdown thing, I'm like, dude, stop. Stop doing the thing. I'll stop. I promise. I promise, Don. I'll stop. Uh, but it's just learning every day and going like, all right, this doesn't work. Try try something else. Do better. Get better, you know? Like fishing. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's the same thing. I tell myself every time I'm on the water do better be better right uh but yeah it's it's uh, totally agree it's something that we keep learning so you've been doing you've been at it for five years getting five years, better yeah. so yeah, yeah i hope to be on that level maybe i'll start an organization i don't know <laughs> there you go I'll there, tell you what. there are there already is one bro no 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 no, no. <laughs> there we'll we'll be uh awesomer anglers i'm kidding don we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, uh, I never expected it to be uh, a second full-time job, that's for sure. Um, yeah. You know, and I've been told by people that it's going to become my main job. Um, I can see it coming, uh, and I can every minute I spend on it, um, I can see it explode. And sometimes I find myself, you know, on purpose, kind of stepping back and not spending any time with it because it gets to be too much of time. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's one of those things. You know, I get a, I have a fantastic full time job. I mean, you know, I go to work all day and I put on a headset and I get to talk about fishing all day long. 
Um, you know, and uh, it's one of those things I see autism anger is growing and growing and growing, and it could become a full-time job in the next five, six, ten years. Um, wow. You know, and it's, uh, I can definitely see it happening. So. Start getting like a team, start growing that thing, and like to you guys watching and listening, like running a a, a nonprofit is not a joke. <laughs> like like you said, getting one started is it's a pretty crazy process, man. Like. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into that to, you know, to it, it costs a lot up front, right? Like to get started, to qualify, to jump through all those hoops, right? And yeah, it, it takes a lot of work for sure. So my hat's off to you, my friend. That is, it's just awesome what you're doing. I love and it. And it's, you know, it's 100% volunteer. I don't, you know, I don't take anything out of it. I don't get paid. Um, so it's, yeah. it's, it's a hard thing. You know, I get paid with smiles, as I always say. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's pretty incredible for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, maybe someday I could pay myself and, uh, yeah. you know, make it, make it a full-time job. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I could see it, definitely see it happening. It's, uh, it's amazing. It, I, I love the letters. I love the pictures I get back. I love the feedback that we get. And, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I guess that's all I can say. <laughs> awesome. We just got to keep growing, man. I love it. And chat, you guys are doing awesome helping out today. You guys are fantastic. I love it. Uh, and Candy, we got your email, so we're going to take care of you. We'll get everything squared away. All right. What, where, where, did we, did we bust through show me? Are we just like we're, crushing the show me today? We're through, we're through the show me. There's two things I want to talk <laughs> about. Te technically three. Technically I do wanna, three. I do want to run the giveaway. Can we start Oh, there's that? a giveaway, you guys. <laughs> Should we start now? Can we start, start the giveaway? But I want to talk while, run, give, give the, give the giveaway rundown do you think? first. Should I do, do the thing? thing? All right. Yeah. All right, you guys, if you are here in chat, good job. If you're not here in chat, bad job. Get back here. Uh, if you guys know anybody who is into fishing or also awesome like Jeff Lauer, who just did a super chat for $20, <laughs> you're awesome, man. Uh, here's some more shipping money Woo! for your smile paycheck. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, man, the Canadian check always gets me, check man. The way, the way you guys spell <laughs> check, I love it. Um, all right, you guys, so you know the deal with the giveaway. We're going to drop $25 via MonsterPass e-gift card, good to MonsterPass.com. So it's good for anything but the subscription, but they got tons of apparel. They got burly apparel on there, and they also have lots and lots of tackle. So, I mean, you guys can fill a cart pretty easily, and they got some good tackle on that side too. So you're going to want this. All you got to do is start chatting, and if your friends aren't here, invite them back in. Make sure they get on the stream. Make sure they smash the like on this video because we're spreading the good word and we're making awesome donations. Get they butts back here. Keep chatting while we talk to Don for a little bit longer. So if you chat, you're entered. So start chatting. Oh, yeah. I want to see chat, 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 chat. So start chatting. Uh, and then Charles will roll the giveaway in a few minutes. Yeah. While we're letting people chat, 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 I want to talk about Chitty how does chat. one... This is like there's certain things where like when when people get into certain stuff, I'm like very confused and I'm in awe of how they get started in things. One of them is how do people get started collecting cars? That makes no sense to me. That's like, oh, I have nine houses. Like, how do you get into that? I don't know. I don't. I have like one car. I'm like, how did I? I shouldn't That's be allowed enough. to have one. How do you get twelve? I don't. It makes no sense. One of in that same realm of things that I don't know how you get into it, how do you get into making rods? Because every time I receive a fishing rod, I'm like, this is technology. Uh, you should not be able to make this by hand. Like, how, how do you how do you go about being like, you don't want to do today. I'm going to make them. A, I'm gonna learn how to make a fire. Like, what? Like, give, yeah. give me that backstory. So that backstory, that, that's a, actually a fun one. Um, the guy that I call my dad is actually my best friend's dad. My dad passed away when I was young. Uh, but I call him dad, and it's, I mean, you know what they say is, uh, uh, in fact, on his fishing rod I built for him, he taught me how to build, but uh, I built him one, and it, you know, it says on there that, uh, uh, you know, blood doesn't make you family, love does. And, you know, when I was 18, we were taking a trip up into northern Ontario pike fishing, my first time ever pike fishing. And I asked him, I said, you know, what rod, what rod do I buy? And he goes, you're not buying one, you're building one. So we, and he had built rods before, so we sat there at his kitchen table. I built my first rod when I was 18 years old and just kept building, kept building, kept building and love it. I mean, it, be, it became what I do now for a living, you know, um, not only building rods, uh, but selling rod components. I mean, if you, any rod company that you can name, I work with them. 
Um, so we sell them all the little parts and things. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of parts involved, you know. Yeah, you, you know, just the blank. Like, yeah, I can just, like, I'm at my rod bench right now. But I mean, this is where it starts off as a stick, you know, and uh, a stick and some thread and some little pieces of metal, and you glue it all together and you make it work. That's so awesome. Follow See? question. Where do you get these rod guides that look like tiny spaceships? <laughs> hey, you, you must be talking about the microwave guys. Uh, yeah. What? Dude, the company I work for makes those. Uh, uh, dude, American they look NASA. like it, it, it looks like a decorative saber hilt. They're unbelievably <laughs> sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Dude, they're bonkers. Yeah. They're no, bonkers. They're they're amazing. Actually, Doug Hannon, the bass professor, invented those back in the mid 2000s. And um, my boss, one of the owners of the company, worked with him in 2010, 2011 to perfect it and bring it to market. And we've been selling them ever since. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're absolutely amazing. It's on every single one of my rods. And that's why I told that's people, awesome. like, go to the website, go to the Facebook, wherever your supercomputer takes you, get up, just look at the guides. Yeah, they're freaking. I mean, the paint job, like uh, paint job, is that even a fair thing to say? The finish on the rods is completely silly, but not in a bad way, in an awesome way. But those, <laughs> the guides, I just, I instantly was like, wait, what? Say what? They're, yeah. they look amazing. It's amazing technology. I mean, it really does it acts like a funnel and it actually mm -hmm. shoots line out straight. So it actually helps with vibration, helps with weight, helps with distance and accuracy, all that. And they, I'm making them for everything. I saw a question on here about fly rods. You know, do I make fly rods? I make everything now but ice rods. Um, I have made ice rods before, but I hate them. There's only three guides on them, but they're so flimsy that, that I don't build them anymore. But I do make fly rods. I know I know builders all over the world. So if you want a local builder, and almost all of them will work without any anglers. Um, you know, so the list on on your site is another Absurd. silly. I mean, it's That's crazy. Small list. That's a very, very small amount. <laughs> so suffice it to say, if you're looking for something custom made, you're probably going to be able to find it. Yeah. yeah. I'll just, you know, I'll just manglers org and you go to the custom rods page. I got a list on there of builders that I know that are really good builders, and I know them very well. And they we have autism anglers decals that go on the rods, and everyone on that list has them. So. I want, uh, we I just want put the website up. Life. Thank you. Yeah, we just put the website up. Thank you, Charles, for doing that. Yeah, um, absolutely. So we're going to get on one of your 10 to 12 week out orders and get some custom rods, I think. <laughs> I think we need to do that. Because awesome. I just saw the one with the uh, the multicolored handle Oh yeah, is, is on another freaking level. <laughs> 100%. I, want a, I want a pan fishing rod, and I need to get one yeah. for my son. Those, that is yeah. the absolutely yeah. the coolest thing, man. You so know, one good. of the things, I mean, this, you know, this starts off as your handle. You know, just a yep. piece of foam. So uh, it's one of those things that I've done. I've, I've built probably 3,000 rods now. Um, wow. every, every one of them completely different. And, you know, it's just one of those things you hone your skills. Um, but And since you put the website up there, anybody that's watching, if you have a loved one on the spectrum, go to the Awesome Anglers page, fill out the short application, and we're going to send you a box of tackle. Yes. I love it. I love it. All right. Uh you got any rapid fire, Paul, or is this? Oh, that's this it. I think we, we can run it. I, I have a hundred more questions. That's probably for off air. Cause I don't think anybody cares to hear about how far you can blast a turkey. So let's go ahead and just, let's just go ahead and run that giveaway. All right, let's run it. Chaz. Who wins the giveaway? All right. Let me unmute. Okay. There we go. And the winner is Jonathan Sparks. John awesome. Sparks. Who I think did a big donation earlier, maybe a twenty or something. So that's rad. I Jonathan Sparks, you still in here? Say hi and then just drop your he email. Yay! Yay! He said yay. yay. He said yay. yay. Woo. All right, drop your email. Nobody will see it. I won't touch it. See, hands off computer. Not touching. <laughs> I don't. I'm not allowed to touch the computer anymore when people put their emails. Yeah. In. So John, Jonathan, things. just post your email. I'll get it and I'll send it out to uh, Jeff. Yo, and also Butler's Fishing, welcome to the Shark Deucers, my dude. What is up? <laughs> Holy cow. This is amazing. You guys are awesome. <laughs> I love it. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, uh, Chaz, you got Jonathan Sparks' email there, my friend? Sweet. Awesome. Awesome. 
<laughs> Gregory Whitaker says, no, <laughs> like Paul, I never win. <laughs> but bro, you got so many weeks. You can just win every week. You got an option to win every week. Just got to keep, just got to keep plugging away. Yeah. I mean, do we do a giveaway on the, uh, on the members only live? Why not? Perhaps. Perhaps. You'll find out April 13th, 12th, yeah. April 12th, 13th, whatever. 12th? 13th, April 13th. Is that Shard Deucers and Snorlaxers, I think? Se- second and third Deucers tier members. Deucers and Laxers. You got Deucers and Laxers. We got, we got something coming your way. Don't you guys worry. April 13th. If you're not in the club, like, you have no idea what's going on in the show anymore. <laughs> like, uh, no. I was like, <laughs> like, I just need to know what the jokes are about. <laughs> we'll explain after the show. Don't worry. We won't, we won't, we won't leave you in the dark and hang up. That we, we, we promise. All right, you guys. I think we covered I think we raised quite a bit i'm super stoked to go back run the numbers i'll crunch the numbers i'll do the beautiful mind thing with all the equations and we'll figure this out yeah i'll 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 let you know down as soon as i know and then i'll let all y'all know as soon as we make our donation how much we raise i'm stoked to see what that number was but i just want to say thank you everybody in chat everybody you're awesome thank you super chatters you guys are super awesome and thank you super chatters and members you're super super awesome Love you guys. We appreciate you so much. You helped us donate to a great cause here today. And I think Paul and I are going to go back and look at our uh, look at our tackle situation, huh? And try to figure out what the heck we can ship out of here. Yeah, that whole wall. This whole wall. Bye. Yeah, I don't have enough room for all this uh, fish lab stuff. Oh wait, I know where that can go. <laughs> so we got some stuff. We'll we'll be talking down. We're going to figure that out. And, and I, I got to get one of those rods. That's that's yeah. so fantastic. Yo, on the way out the door, Gregory Whitaker with a ten dollars shirt. Just mic drops nation. on the way out. Thanks, sir. <laughs> He's like, let I me close that. this thing out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys have been awesome tonight. Fantastic, Don. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, again, we've we've mentioned it a thousand times on the episode, but go check out Autism Anglers everywhere. So you, you got a Facebook. You got 407 Rods has a Facebook. Uh, yep. You got a website. Is it autismanglers.org? Yeah, yeah. Org. Yep. Got Instagram, it. Autism Anglers on Instagram. Uh, yep. I'm, not really, I'm not really good at it. You know, that's us old guys aren't really much pictures. Really. <laughs> uh, and you can hit me up. Hit me up on Facebook. Email me. Um, you know, if you have tech, if you have extra tackle rods, reels, what anything fishing related, uh, email me. I can give you an address to send it to. Um, you know, check out the website, check out the web store. I got a sale going on with Boss right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's some good stuff on there, and definitely tune into the Facebook page. I use that mostly, yeah. and I'm always updating that. And uh, yeah, no, the, I want to thank everybody too. The super chats are great. Thank you for thank you, Candy, and thank you. I mean, dude. Holy cow! I'm blown away. Yeah, and we you just guys bought, are awesome. We just bought stickers with the kayak ones. I just got four of them, so you I'll be awesome. seeing those on IG going soon. I cannot wait. I'll have one in the truck and one on the boat. Heck yeah, dude! All right, we got it covered. All right, you guys. If you like the show, come back next week. Every gosh dang, I can't even like say anything. Le- leather stocking angler with a 4.99 super chat. Can I? Do you guys want me to not close this out? I, do Do we just hang out here? Do we want to stay here all night? Like we can No, I have to use the restroom. I no, love you guys. Not important. <laughs> not I, important. It's an urgent situation. <laughs> Next hundred dollar donation, Paul will pee his pants. He will. <laughs> it, <laughs> I don't need to share. It won't smell any worse. Yeah, it won't smell know. any worse. Oh, with the zingers. Oh, you can't keep me laughing like this is not fair. <laughs> All right, you guys. We'll be back next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Members only live coming up April 13th. If you're a member, Shark Deuce or Snorlax level, we'll be doing a live for you as well. Same time, same place on a Tuesday, though, instead of a Thursday. But definitely keep coming back for Thursdays. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Chaz, get us out of here. Take us out. Took a swing at a wrecking ball and I prayed for my downfall and I found a way to reconcile cause in my heart it's not worthwhile. It's a bloody battlefield where sun go down on the sea. In the end it's all the same. All you can do is play the game.
street when all I had went up in flames, burning on the dark remains. I cover up every part of my skin, oh, cause I don't like the person within, no, I know I'm the one to blame, all I can do is take the shame, oh, do we say goodbye, refuse to question why, I, I, I'm too sad to say I'm sorry, so lie And pretend that you're okay Swear that you will stay Keep trying for one day Got enough of every melody, they all sound the same, yeah. For my broken heart, no remedy, but maybe if you stay, we can get away with it. Cause you make me love my imperfections, answer all my questions just to show me what's on the other side of inhibition. You'll be there, ready to rescue me if I go out of track. We can get away with it. Cause you make me love my imperfections, answer all my questions just to show me. And I've been chilling, watching the ocean with you. Maybe up with a slow motion crew. And we up in the growlings when people change, but not us. And we just chilling, kicking it, kissed by the sun. Could be soaked to the skin in the moss soon. I know she got the good vibes when seasons change. 